that was the transmit beep and those little do dot do dot that's the confirmation that we've got picked up by a digipeter Okay, we're taking a look at the Kenwood 710. The power button is on the top right. Last time I used the radio, I was speaking on the mic, high power on 144-370. Just a couple of things that need to be set. If I turn up the volume and turn the squelch down, one thing that we have to set is the squelch. Just so it stops the noise because the APRS will not transmit while it's hearing noise. The second thing is the high power. Let's go ahead and change that. So I'm going to hit key and then the low power option comes on. So I've dropped that down to low power. We're still waiting for the GPS signal to come up. But while we're waiting I'm going to hit key again. It changes the soft menu buttons. I want the beacon, B-C-O-N. I'm going to turn that on. So basically that's it. I've got the beacon turned on. I've got the channel uh, power set to low. Oh, one last thing, the frequency needs to be set to 144-390. And the sound of the APRS data, it's a 1200 baud modem. So if you've ever used AOL, it might sound very familiar to an AOL modem. We can turn the volume off. And in the background, if we get a um, packet related to this radio, a confirmation that it transmitted, uh, we'll get a tone, a beep, and then we'll get an, another beep when it registers with the, uh, the digipeter. Our goal, and we'll talk about this in another setup video course, is to hit a digipeter that then hits an eye gate that then records the packet beacon on the internet. And the um, setup for all that is a one-time setup that you do once you buy a new radio, but we'll talk about that later. We're just focusing right now on on any given day when I need to turn on the beacons. When I was previously using the radio for voice, what are the changes? I'll go to low power, I'll go to 144390, and I'll uh, turn on the beacon. And as soon as it discovers a GPS signal, that'll start to blink, and the beacons will automatically start going out on one minute intervals. Okay, I noticed that the GPS icon is blinking. That means it's discovered the uh, lock on the GPS satellites and at this point the automatic beacons are enabled and they'll go out every minute. So we'll wait here for about a minute and we should see a transmission. There'll be a power bar here down on the bottom left indicating transmit power. That was the transmit beep. And those little do dot, do dot, that's the confirmation that we've got picked up by a digipeter. And our goal is to hit a digipeter, which is a radio on the top of a mountain, that retransmits our original signal to a wider range, hoping that there's a volunteer internet station within that range that will then forward the packet to the APRS.FI uh, website map. That's an infrastructure all run by volunteers, no monthly subscription, which is different from the Garmin inReach, which is using Iridium network, or the Spot Trace, which is using uh, the other network, I forget what it's called, Global Star, or something like that. Both of those are corporate infrastructures with the monthly subscription. This is all volunteer, free, uh, no monthly subscription service. So at this point, we've got our beacons. I've watched it go around twice. Here's a third time. The VIA, the VIA signal is giving us the call sign of the digipeter that picked us up and then bounced our signal farther. And we're hoping that within that range there's an eye gate an internet gateway that would have heard that signal and registered on the internet so we could see it on the APRS FI, but we don't know. There's really no radio confirmation of an internet success until we actually go back to the internet webpage and take a look 
at APRS.FI. We'll do that next and we'll log in as K6BLR-7. That's this radio right here, K6BLR-7. And we'll see that I'm parked at a uh, hilltop park called Gillerin Park in Mission Viejo and I'm looking out at a baseball diamond. So when we get back to the desktop, that's where we should be on the map as well. We're looking at the website APRS.FI. This is a map that shows all the APRS radios that are turned on. And the call sign that we're going to take a look at is my call sign, K6BLR-7. So here's the match on that location for K6BLR7. Remember that I had indicated being next to a baseball diamond, so let's zoom in. And let's turn on the satellite picture. Here we go. So that's it. I'm parked right here in front of this baseball diamond. We could see the uh, Kenwood icon for the radio. K6BLR-7. Let's see if it'll center it on the screen. There we go. So there's the uh, parking spot in front of the baseball diamond. I'll double click this again to pop up that little window. A couple other things it shows is the time that the beacon was recorded. From a previous trip, I had sent a stamp camping tonight as a message from the trip to Utah when I stopped at the Valley of Fire, I camped overnight, and just to let friends and family know that I'd been, I was going to camp there that night. The cell phone service didn't work, and the um, uh, text messaging didn't work. The three G, uh, the phone dropped down to three G, and then just dropped out completely. So that was a way to communicate back to friends and family. Now, one thing that's interesting: remember that the APRS network is a volunteer network. This call sign here represents the call sign of the volunteer that heard my packet and then shared it on the internet. And if I click that, we could see here's on the, this hilltop right here where that radio was. And if I zoom back out, it was probably three or four miles from where I was. Zoom a little back, back in a little bit. So this is the location of the hilltop that picked up my signal and I was right here at the Gillerin Park. So the distance from here to here is a couple miles. But the uh, APRS network, the thing that's nice about it is that there's no monthly subscription fee. There's no uh, Iridium fee or Global Star fee. It's all volunteer uh, network. So the APRS uh, beacon service here. And even this map that we're using at APRS.FI is a volunteer service as well. So the whole infrastructure is free to use and it's uh, global. It's across the whole world and there's pretty good coverage, uh, especially in California. Hello everybody. Today is Wednesday, the 9th of February, 2022. And I want to thank you for watching to the end of this video. I think of, as of this video, we've got for subscribers, so if you can help me reach a goal of 10 subscribers, be sure to like and subscribe and comment to this video. Also, uh, comment on whether or not you think I need to clean the Kenwood faceplate. There's a little bit of construction going on in the van. I'm working on some cabinet changes and drilling out some access holes, and there's quite a bit of sawdust in the back of the van. I can see it's blowing up into the cab of the van and getting all over the front of the Kenwood radio, so I'll probably have to work on that. Anyway, thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye-bye. That was the transmit beep. And those little do-dot, do-dot, that's the confirmation that we've got picked up by a digipeter.